All right, welcome back, and I think we're going to do some real statistics now. I'm going to talk about what we refer to as measures of location, measures of position, uh, measures of central tendency. And the ones that I'm going to deal with um, right now are the mean, which is an arithmetic mean, the median, the mode, and the weighted average. So what I have for you is I've got just a set of 20 data points, and they could be 20 observations of anything. They could be, I don't know, the number of interceptions that a quarterback throws in um, in a season or, or in a game, I guess. But what we're going to do is you'll see that I've arranged them from smallest to largest. Anytime that you get a set of raw data points, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and sort them so that they're arranged by order. It's just going to make everything in your life a lot easier. All right, let's go on and figure out what the mean or the arithmetic average is. Before I do that, I want to talk to you about the difference between parameters and statistics. All right, what you're going to see here is I have two formulas, and they look a lot alike. When we look at this first one, okay, what I've got is I have, I read that formula to read mu, almost like mu, mu equals the sum of x divided by capital N. And down here, what's weird is I've got the sum of x divided by little n. Well, they look like pretty much like the same thing, except that because this one has a Greek letter, and this one has a Roman letter, we know something really important about them. And that is that any time that you see a Greek letter, any time that you see a Greek letter, what you're going to find is that we're referring to the population. When we talk about referring to the population, we mean every observation that could be made in the whole possible universe that we're looking at. Every time you see mu, you know we're talking about the population mean. When we get down here to x bar, this one right down here, this one right over here, okay. x bar, because it's a Roman letter, is the symbol for the mean or the average of the sample that was drawn from the population. Only difference is, is what you are or are not going to include in your data. We're going to presume that these 20 data points that I've picked are a sample, and so I'm going to show you how to calculate x bar. When we say x bar, all we're saying is the sum of all the numbers, or all those numbers in our data point, added together and divided by n. You all have figured, been figuring out averages since you were in, in grade school. So this is absolutely no different. What's going to happen is I'm simply going to take and I'm going to add all of my data points up. So I'm going to just get the sum of all of them and I'm going to divide them by how many there are in the data set. In this case, it's going to be 200. In this case, it's going to be 236 divided by 20. Well, last time I did my math, 236 divided by 20 was 11.8. That's all there is to coming up with x bar or the mean of the sample. Simply add up all of your observations, all your values of your data points, divided by how many you have. Now, what is this magic thing that we talk about that's called a median? Well, think about what the median is when you're driving. The median is the middle of the road, isn't it? Well, same idea here. The median is simply the point that falls in the center. Remember talking about location, right? We're talking about measure of position. So my question is, what number falls in the middle of my data set? Well, if I have 20 data points, it's an even number. And because it's an even number, what I have to do is I have to count over to figure out how many data points I have. Well, I know that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, 
this is the middle of the data set, isn't it? And the reason I know it's the middle of the data set is that I have the same number of data points in front of 12 and 13 as I do behind it. See, how many do I have here? Count those up for me. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on that side. And over here, how many do I have? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that tells me right here is dead center in my data set. When I have an even number in my data set, in this case I had 12 and 13, I'm still looking for the middle, which means I have to take 12 plus 13 and divide it in two to figure out, hey, what is the middle of my data set? Remember, it doesn't have to be a number that appears in the data set. I'm just saying that based on a data set that ranges from 8 to 16 and is comprised of this set of numbers right here, if I wanted the number that was smack in the middle, that divided the two in between, it would be 12.5. Now the nice thing is, is that if you have an odd number, if I only had 19, I would just count from the left, count from the right. When I got to the center, I would be done. But in the case of a data set with an even number of observations, we always find the center two and find out what lies in between the middle or in exactly in between those two center data points. Okay, what the heck is a mode? It's not like mode, like pi a la mode. Mode is simply a statistics term for most, whoops, most common. Mode is, some data sets have a mode. In other words, they have a data point or an observation that appears more often than others. In that case, if there's one mode, we are unimodal. Just like if we have two modes, we are bimodal. Think about the difference. A one-wheeled bicycle is a unicycle. If you walk on two feet, you're bipedal, um, bipolar, by whatever. I'm not going there, but you get the idea. One mode is unimodal. Two modes is two is bimodal. What happens if I have three modes? What if I have a data set where I have a number or three numbers that appear most common? but they, each one of them appears the same number of times, then that data set is multimodal. Whoops, I cannot type today. <coughs> same way goes if I have no mode. No mode means a data set, <coughs> excuse me, that has no data point that ever repeats. Each one is unique to itself, then you just say it is no mode. It's not no modal, it's just the data set does not have a mode. So if I'm going to find the mode for the data set up top, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to take a look and I'm going to say 8 appears twice, 9 appears twice, 10 appears three times, 11 once, 12 twice, 13 appears 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, 14 appears four times, 16 appears one time. Well, you can see, what's the most common number in this data set? 13. Because it appears five times. 14 only appears four times. 10 only appears three times. And everything else even less. So if I was going to say what is the mode of this data set, it equals 13. I didn't have to do any calculations. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was to observe the data set 
and figure out which number or which value appeared most often. All right, so now we've done mean, median, and mode. Now I want to talk to you a minute about a weighted average. This formula looks a lot scarier than it is, trust me. <laughs> weighted average is simply x bar, or my individual x's, times the weight associated with each individual x. In order to do that, each value has, you have to determine how many times or what weight it has relative to the entire data set. Well, we just figured out a minute ago how many times each one of these observations or times or months or whatever the heck it is we're dealing with here, how many times each one appeared in the data set? Well, that's the same thing as its weight. So what I have gone through and done down here is pretty simple. Here are all my x values. You'll notice that I have every, whoops, let's try that again. I have every number or value out of my data set represented. Here are their weights. Well, what does weight look a whole lot like? I think weight looks a whole lot like frequency that you just did. What I say is I say eight appears two times, nine appears two times, 10 is three. Remember down here we had uh, 13, which ended up being our mode with um, five appearances. The key to your weights is that you need to make sure, just like in your frequency distribution, that the total of your weight adds up the total number of data points that you have in your data set. So all I've really done is create kind of a crude frequency distribution in order to be able to determine how what the weighted average of this data set is. All right, now I've actually worked, believe it or not, um, the, this top of this formula, which is simply the weight of x, which is this, times x gives me 16. Remember, all I'm doing is the weight times the value or our observation. So in this instance, I have 10 is my value of x. It's weighted 3. In other words, it appears 3 times. It gives me 30. I just keep going down. I say 12 appears twice, so that's 24. 13 appears 5 times. 13 times 5 is 65. And I go through until I have taken every x times its weight to give me the weight of x. All right, so we've gotten that much of the formula done, but I've got this sigma here. I've got that sigma here. And remember that sigma always means sum. I'm getting better at drawing with this little pencil thing. It means sum. Well, sum simply means, hey, add me all up. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to strike a total of this, and I'm going to say 236. So now I've taken x times the weight of x, and now I've applied this part of the formula right here, where I sum them up. This part of the formula right here says weight 1 plus weight 2. Well, that's the total of all your weights. Well, the total of all your weights is 20. So now the formula tells me take the sum of x times its weight, divide it by the sum of the weights, which is 236, divided by 20. What I end up with is I end up with a weighted average of 11 point, point eight. So what you'll see here is my completed chart, or the chart that, that I was working with just to make my, my life a little bit easier, where I took all of my x's times the weights. I had the sum of my weights here, and the sum of x 
w1 times x1 plus w2 times x2. And I took my 236, I divided it by 20, and I got a weighted average of 11.8. So what did we end up with for all of these measures of um, location or measures of central tendency? Well, my mean ended up being 11.8. My median ended up being 12.5. The mode was equal to 13, because that's the one that appeared the most common. My weighted average ended up being 12.5. You can see that each one of the measures kind of where the middle of the data point falls except what you have to look at in evaluating which one is best is remember that the mean is going to fall somewhere here. The median is going to fall right here. The mode is going to be here and the weighted average is going to be here. So as you can tell, the mode, because of what number it is, tends to pull the middle to the right. The mean pulls it a little bit to the left, but the median and the weighted average pretty much puts you spot on in the middle of the data set. Hope this makes at least this part of the chapter a little bit clearer, and I will be talking to you guys in a little bit about measures of dispersion.